What's up, guys? So, um, actually, this is a video I was trying to make earlier in the week. I just I didn't get time until right now. So, uh, we're going to talk about the stock market correction that's been going on since uh, last week. So, uh, I don't know if you noticed, I, I think I posted it on my story, but I might have taken it down. Uh, as far as there was being, uh, there was a whale, which happened to be SoftBank, uh, that was driving up the option prices and therefore, you know, uh, causing the surge. So this is the the theory behind it. And I'll tell you into what I think it's happening and, uh, and what you could do to protect your trades. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's get into this theory. So the theory is, is SoftBank, and if you don't know who they are, they got their claim to fame. In the early 2000s, they invested in Alibaba. They, they threw down $20 million. And then in 2010, they, um, uh, you know, Alibaba successfully listed, uh, IPO'd, and even that $20 million bet turned into like, I think, close to $20 billion, right? So they had a lot of cash to, to invest. And then they started investing in all kinds of unicorns like uh, uh, Uber and um, uh, what else was not, one of their other plays. Pretty much everyone that was coming up that was hot, they had a piece of it because they were trying to catch that next, uh, that next Alibaba, right? Um, they started a fund, uh, the fund was, uh, called like the dream fund or something like that. They raised like a hundred billion dollars total. Uh, but you know, the, there was disastrous when they went after like WeWork and there was a couple of other deals that they didn't did that just didn't pan out. So people start, started to lose a little bit of confidence. Um, so, you know, what they did is that, well, they had extra cash and, you know, a good way to make money if you have a lot of cash is if you're the options like seller. Uh, you know, and, and if you listen to my videos, you'll know that like, you know, the probabilities of, of, of options hitting, uh, could be pretty favorable. Like if you deploy a large amount of capital, like for example, let's say a stock was trading at $200 today. And let's say you, uh, sold the contract, uh, a month out and said, uh, if this stock gets to a hundred or $250, which would be, that's a dramatic increase, right? That's like a 15% plus because $200 and then the 250 would be, well, 10, 20% increase plus, right? If it gets to $250, I'll give you the shares at $250. Uh, but then in order for you, if you're buying the option to make the money, it'd have to go above $250, right? Because you have to pay, you know, for the option, you'd probably pay like two bucks. So if the stock went above $252, you would make money. But on the other end, if it never got to $250, the person would keep the $2. Now, what they did is they didn't do the, the selling. They actually did the buying. They just went in there, and this is what they call a whale. And a whale is, well, you know, big. It's in the ocean. It's like one of the biggest animals, right? Or it is the biggest animal, right? And uh, when they started buying, they started buying uh, tech like crazy, like close to $4 billion worth of options spread out in that time. So what these guys would do is they would buy out-of-the-call uh, or out of the call, <laughs> out of the money options. And that, and this is what people are speculating is that fueled with retail investors, you know, like the Robin Hooders of the world, uh, that caused the underlying stock to go up. Because what happens is if I sell the stock price here, so I say, Hey, no matter what, I'll, uh, I'll give you the stock price at this price because you have a reasonable expectation that the stock isn't going to go from here you know, to here in, in whatever amount of time, right? That's that's how reasonably it works. But what happened is when you got so many people buying these options here, in order for people to protect themselves, they, they have to buy the shares at this price because they can't run it naked. They can't just say, oh, okay, whatever. If it runs, we'll pay. Because no, you're going to be billions of dollars in the loss because if it shoots past this, you're on the hook, right? So, you know, what? because they bought so many freaking calls and then all these Robin Hooders jumped on and started buying all these calls, people were like, oh, shit, now I'm actually going to have to buy these shares. They started buying shares just to make sure it didn't, you know, fuel out. And then that caused the stock to start coming up. And then that caused the algos to start going up. And on top of this, which is my personal opinion, it's not four billion is really not enough in options to shake the market. But, uh, you know, it's also the Federal Reserve just buying and not letting it get low. So but I'll get to that. So they're saying that since, you know, they they uh, bought billions and billions of dollars of options, you know, uh, out of the money and retail investors started buying it. The people that were selling it were like, oh, shit, this is going to happen. So they actually went up and started buying it, uh, buying the actual stock. And uh, when the stock started rising, they just kept moving the, you know, the price up. They started buying more options and more options and more options. As you can kind of see, it gets to a point, but eventually it catches itself because... 
so many people have the underlying asset. And then when you let uh, evaluations just get extremely out of hand, that's what really happens. I mean, guys, you had Tesla trading at 2,000 uh, times earnings. And, and what that means is usually <clears throat> it's uh, the price of the stock, it was the PE, divided by the earnings. So the stock's trading at a thousand bucks, but the stock and and and, and the company's earning a hundred dollars, you know, uh, a year, then the PE would be ten, right? Because a thousand divided by a hundred, or a uh, hundred could go into a thousand ten times. That's pretty fair. It means like roughly in ten years you'd be able to get your money back, right? If if the PE is trading at two thousand, I mean that's just that's like what two hundred years for you to, in order to get your money back if you were to buy that stock today. The downside of PE is is you're really uh, hoping for uh, like extreme growth, or I mean, uh, uh, it doesn't factor in extreme growth, right? Yeah, the PE might be a thousand or a hundred or two hundred. You're like, oh, that's too expensive, but that doesn't mean the stock's too expensive because you have to look at the future of the stock, right? You have to look at uh, like what technologies are they working on, what do they have in the future, how much of a market share could get, how much money could it make? But guys, two thousand, that's a lot, on average. Um, Tech stocks trade around like a 30 to sometimes high 40, which is crazy because on since, you know, the inception of the stock market till now, the average shares have been around the 15, um, um, uh, 15 mark. And usually when it starts getting into the 20s, the PE ratio starts getting into the 20s, 22s, that's when you usually have a correction because things are overbought. But we're in a new age now. We're in the information age now where these guys are making money at record rates. You know, this is not our mom and pop. Uh, Procter and Gamble, you know, just making toothpaste and just their big tobacco. And people are just, you know, you kind of know how much people are going to consume of that. Um, this is something that's, you know, the world has never seen, you know, where you're making money in so many different ways now. And um, so, you know, and, and overall, what do I think of it is, 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 you know, think of something like Apple, it went up over 200% in a very short amount of time, right? And if it pulls back 30%, which it hasn't pulled back 30% yet, I don't think, no, because it was like a 145, but if it did pull back 30% and then it starts leveling out, then starts growing slowly from the, guys, it's still really good. The average stock, uh, the market goes up at 10% a year, right? So you had, to, you literally at, at 200%, you, you, you had 20 years of growth happen in a matter of four months. I mean, that's, that's, that's insane, you know? So a little bit of a pullback isn't bad. And now do I think the the option thing is what's really I'm sure they made money because they realized not that they realized, oh, we're gonna we're gonna Ponzi scheme this thing. Oh, they realized the Federal Reserve is is gonna continue to buy stocks and and bonds and and mortgages on the on the back end. And uh they're not gonna let this thing fail. And you're gonna have investors that need to put money somewhere. So, you know, if you had a lot of money, I mean it and if you sat back after the turmoil happened and they came out and said that, it would make sense to buy a lot of options because maybe not in three months, but you definitely thought in six months or years, prices would skyrocket because the Fed's not going to let it drop at a certain point. And now what happened is the, the market's been popped up and people have been invested. And, you know, you're in a good spot right now where it, I, I don't think that we're going to allow a huge pullback to happen, but you might have lost money. You might have got hurt. So what happens if you buy at the top? What's a strategy that you could do? Well, if you go back in my, my feed, you'll see I, I, I posted a video about options. So the way this strategy works is you have to have 100 shares. So if you have 100 shares in a company, you open up the options chain. So let's say you bought the shares at like 50 bucks. And let's say the option or the stock now is worth 45 bucks. So you're $5, you know, in the hole. What you do is you go open up the options chain. You go about four months or three months out and you sell the $55 option for let's say hypo, or whatever it's gonna be for about $5 or $2, that's gonna get credited to your account. And as the stock goes up, uh, you, you know, you're know you gonna make money because you still own the stock, but you keep that credit. So if it blows by that 55, who cares? You got all your money back and it's a safer way to play. And if it goes up, but it never hits that, you got to keep that $2, which would be like 200 bucks. And it's a way for you to, to hedge uh, your losses. Uh, without having to buy puts, you you sell the call. So you know every three months you could start lowering uh, your your cost of entry for it. So it's a way for you to manage uh, that particular trade. And if you want to talk about that more, just DM me and we could talk about you know your individual position and what you could do if you don't have ten shares or if you only have like five or ten shares. 
I would most likely tell you to hold on. This only works if you have at least 100 because you got to be able to control the underlying, you know, asset thing. So overall, I mean, I wouldn't be panicking, man. Even if even if tech drops another 10% in the next three weeks, um, we've only had about a 10, 10% sell-off. You know, even if it drops off 30%, I mean, we'd have to drop 50, 60% to really feel hurt. And I don't think it's going to get that bad. I think it's stabilizing right now. And now would be the time where you slowly start building your position in it. So, um, yeah, that's that's my wrap up for this. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I covered everything I wanted to talk about. And, uh, you know, just everyone evaluates stocks differently. You know, you, you look at it like saying, oh, that's crazy, 2000 PE. But like I said, you got to consider you got to consider that that's a little bit crazy. 2000 is a little bit even crazy for me. But um, you also got to look into what you think the future is going to be. And on the future's risk. Right. If you just evaluate if it's making a dollar and you're like, I'm willing to pay ten dollars for the stock because I know I'll get my money back in 10 years because this company's been around for 100 years and they've always made a dollar. A lot less risk. If you're paying for a higher P.E., you got to evaluate what you think they could earn in the future. And even to take on more risk to pay even more than that, you got to evaluate uh, any unseen things that this company could do that, you know, it could do that everyone else can't see. Like if you would have saw that. You know, Netflix was going to be in every single home for 20 bucks. Oh, you would have paid $100 for Netflix when it was trading at 100 because you're like, oh, my God, this is worth way more. Right. Or maybe you thought, no, this is a fad. It's just a bunch of young kids. We're still going to want to watch our TV and our and our dish and our cable. Then then you wouldn't buy there. So that's like one example. But, hey, I hope this helped. I hope this kind of wrapped it up. And like I said, if you got questions, I mean, uh, shoot me a DM and I'll, I'll respond back whenever I can. Um Hopefully, I'll post one more video on 5G, which I'm excited about. And then, um, yeah, that'll be it. So, hey, if you enjoyed this, share it with one person. Help me grow the account.